All right. I know it says in the bulletin we're not going to do all 176 verses, but we could. We could. Anybody that brave? Anybody that brave? All right. I'm going to start today. Psalm 119 is unique. I'm actually going to give you a brief overview of the entire psalm. So we are going to hit all 176 verses, Wally. So I was doing some research on it. Psalm 119 is the longest psalm. It is the longest psalm. I believe it's also the longest chapter in the Bible. So the major theme in Psalm 119 is the Word of God in the children of God. So that's the major theme. That's big picture. Take it down a step. So the basic theme is the practical use of the Word of God in the life of a believer. How does it apply to you? Um, Psalm 119 is what they call an acrostic poem. Does anybody know what acrostic poem is? Just raise your hand. I won't make you explain it. I got one. Cindy, too. That's two of them. All right. An acrostic poem is a poem written. This is a Hebrew poem. And there's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. So each one of these little sections, it's broke down into 22 sections, each containing eight lines. And each one of these sections begins with a letter in the Hebrew alphabet, and each line begins with the same letter. This is a literary masterpiece. But I don't know Hebrew, so I can't really take in the full effect of that. But just think about that, how much time and thought went into this. So that's what an acrostic poem is. Psalm 119 references the Word of God in 171 of its 176 verses. It uses eight different words, Hebrew words, it's translated differently, eight different words to reference the Word of God, which we would call Scripture. And I'm going to give you, and it uses those words 187 times. So, I think I've been here long enough. You probably know the answer. If something is repeated in the Bible, it is what? It's important. The Word of God is important. The Word of God is important. So I'm going to give you a basic breakdown. So I'm going to give you these words because I, I kind of am hoping you take this and go home and you go, I want to know more and dig into this some more by yourself, just you and the Holy Spirit. It'll, it'll be a good time. You'll enjoy it. So the first word is the word way or ways. And that is used 13 times. The second word it used to describe God's word is law, laws, teaching, or instruction. Those were all translated out of one word, and that was used 25 times in this psalm. The word testimony was used 23 times. The word precepts, 21 times. The word statutes, 21 times. The word commands or command, 22 times. The word judgment or ordinance, 23 times. And the word word, 39 times. And here's something, a cool fact I did not know about Psalm 119, is that every verse of these 176 verses, except for 1, 2, 3, and 15, are addressed to God. So the psalmist is talking to God. I thought that was interesting. All right, now you got, that's the big overview. Big overview. Give you a few tools. And if you want a copy of this, talk to me later. I'm more than willing to share my notes with you. So talk to me later. I'll, I can email it to you. I can point you to the commentary where I drew this from. I'm willing to give you tools. I'm willing to give you tools. 
So open your Bibles with me to Psalm 119. And we are going to read a portion of God's Word together. Yeah, we'll lay that there. Psalm 119, we're going to take three sections today because that's a pretty healthy bite already. Psalm 119, starting in verse 1. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep His testimonies, who seek Him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in His ways. You've commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart. When I learn your righteous rules, I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. That was the first section. Verse 9. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I've stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the rules of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies I delight as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. That's the second section. Deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. I'm a sojourner on the earth. Hide not your commandments from me. My soul is consumed with longing for your rules at all times. Your rebuke and insolent accursed ones who wander from your commandments. Take away from me scorn and contempt, for I have kept your testimonies. Even though princes sit plotting against me, your servant will meditate on your statutes. Your testimonies are my delight. They are my counselors. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you that it speaks to us. I thank you for your spirit that gives us understanding. Yeah, like it's been prayed already, give us ears to hear. Ears to hear. May my words that I speak, may they be yours. May your people be changed because they spent time in your word. You do the work. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. We'll walk through this again a little bit. So blessed are those whose way is blameless. Who walk in the law of the Lord. So the first part of that, blessed are those whose way is blameless. Whose way here has been blameless? That's right. Nobody. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. May we be not just hearers of the word, but doers also, it says in James. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart. There's a lot of things in this world that are pulling for our attention, isn't there? Lots. A lot of them are good. Some of them are bad. But what does it mean to seek Him with our whole heart? That's your everything. Everything you've got to seek it. I titled today's message, Treasure the Word. What do we treasure? What is it that we treasure? What do you do with treasure? What do we do with treasure? We try and store it and protect it. And protect it. Oh, I like that. I like that. We store it, protect it. What do you treasure? Treasure your kids? Your spouse? 
your truck, you can fill in the blank. Money? Why do you put money in a safe? Store it and protect it. Makes sense. But the text tells us that we are to... I got lost. You can help me if you want. Yeah, I got lost. But store up your heart. Store it up. Yeah, we'll keep going. Don't worry about it. So, that's the first point of today's message is to seek Him with your whole heart. This goes way back to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, 5 and 7. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these commands, commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. We are to impress them on our children. So it's okay to teach your children biblical values. Teach them the word of God. It's actually a commandment here. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit down at home. Talk about them at home. Not something we're only supposed to do at church. Talk about them at home when you walk along the road, so as you're living life. And when you lie down, and when you get up. It seems like you're our whole day now, doesn't it? So first, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. That's everything you've got, everything you've been given. Now, Jeremiah 29, we... Jeremiah 29, 11 is pretty, everybody's pretty familiar with that. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Do you know what the context of that verse is? This is the God speaking through the prophet Jeremiah, telling the Israelites that they're going to be in captivity for seven years. And while they're there, it's kind of, they're getting pretty discouraged, I suppose. So this is Jeremiah 29, 10 through 14. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and I will fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me. And find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place for which, from which I carried you into exile. When you are in captivity, you will seek me, and, I will fi- and you will find me. You will call on me, you will come, you will pray to me, and I'll listen to you. This was literal captivity. These people were captured, brought into slavery. But there's things in our life, sin will hold us captive. Sin will hold us captive. The promise, it follows through to you, to me. That which holds us captive. God says, if you call on me and come and pray to me, I'll listen to you. I will listen to you and you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. So go after him with everything you have. He will listen to you. He has plans for you. All right, we're going to go into the second section. (laughs) Verse 9. How can a young man keep his way pure? Young man, woman, young person. By guarding it according to your word. We find in Exodus, God gives us the Ten Commandments. Those aren't fences, people. Well, they are. But they're to keep us safe. 
that we can have a blessed life. Anytime we exit, we do things our way. We exit God's plan. The road is narrow that leads to life, but the road is wide. It's broad that leads to destruction. It's easy to get off the road. But if we walk according to his word, according to his ways, that's when we have life abundantly. With my whole heart, verse 10 says, I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. So he's asking God to keep him on a narrow path. Keep him on the straight way. Help me, guide me. And then the verse I talked to the kids about, verse 11, I've stored up your word in my heart. That is absolute best way to know God's word is to spend time in it. Maybe memorization isn't your your strongest thing. I'm telling you, the Spirit will give you the word when you need it. When you need it, you will remember it. It might not be word for word, but you'll remember what God needs you to remember. With every temptation He leads us to, He He gives us a way out. We just have to take it. Second point, treasure God's word in your heart. That's in your very, very being, very being. Jesus still told two parables found in Matthew 13. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. And when a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, he went and sold all he had and he bought that field. He sold everything he had to go after the treasure. The Word of God is that treasure. Are we going after it with that kind of passion? Do you love the Word of God that much that you go after it? i got to turn to Matthew because I missed a verse in my notes. So Matthew 13, verse 45 45 and 46, it's the other half of that parable. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who, finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had, and he bought it. Do we treasure God's word that much? They're willing to give up everything we have to go get it. Because according to God's word, that's how we keep our way pure. Blessed are those whose way is blameless. Go to verse 1, who walk in the law of the Lord. How do we keep pure? You see the thought process going through this? Psalmist understood it. Verse 12, blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. Teach me your statutes. I will meditate, verse 15, on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. 16, I will delight in your statutes and I will not forget your word. Delight. He wasn't that, those parables in Matthew. In his joy, he went and sold. In his joy, he went and sold all he had to buy that field, or to buy that pearl. It was in his joy. All right, let's go to 17. Deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. It sure seems like the psalmist is very aware that he needs God to help him. In the Lord's Prayer, we pray, give us this day our daily bread. Yes, that's food for our bodies, but it's also food for our heart and for our soul. That's the word of God. So Lord, give us this day our daily bread. He says, I'm 18, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Did we pray that? Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. 
We can sit down just to read the Word, just to check our box. Yep, I did it. I'm good. Every day. Or do we go with it like this? Sit down and pray. Say, Lord, open my eyes that I may see. That I may see the wondrous things in there. Jesus promised his disciples, his followers, you and I, I pray are his followers. He promised us a helper. When the Spirit of Truth comes, John 16, 13, and 14, when the Spirit of Truth comes, he'll guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future, and he will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. That's a gift. The Holy Spirit is a gift. It's a gift. I believe it says in Ephesians, it's the guarantee of our inheritance to glory. It's the down payment of life forever with Jesus. That's Holy Spirit. So that was the third point. Ask God to open your eyes to see His truth. Because how does a young man keep his way pure? By guarding according to his word. Treasure the word. Go after it. Verse 20, My soul is consumed with longing for your rules. Again, there's plenty in life that draws us away. The psalmist said, my soul is consumed. What's your focus? What's your treasure? The Word of God is a gift. I want you to take that away today. It's a gift. The Spirit is a gift to help you understand it, to open our eyes to see it, what is in it, how we are to apply it to our lives to make us more like Jesus. The Word of God is how God reveals, one of the ways He reveals Himself to us. It says His, His eternal nature and power is clearly perceived in all creation. So yeah, we have creation to see. But he gave us his word that we can know. It's beautiful. So in closing, treasure God's word. Seek him with your whole heart. Treasure his word in your heart. And ask God to open your eyes to see his truth. Lord, I do thank you for your word. Thank you for the... 119th Psalm. Lord, this is just a little bit of it. A little bit of it. And it's loaded. Lord, I do pray that your Spirit would just draw us to this this week. That we'd spend some time with you seeing how precious your Word is. Uh, not only to us, but to you. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Lord, if there's... Lord, if there's someone who's bound in captivity today, if there's something holding them back, holding them down, that they just, we just need to follow you better. Lord, reveal that to us, what it is, first and foremost, because we can't fix it till we acknowledge that it exists. And Lord, by your power, come into our lives and have your way with us that we can better serve you to bring you honor, to bring you glory. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.